All right, hello again, folks. Going to be uh, number three video in the uh, rebuild series here for my Triumph Spitfire. This one I'm going to be getting the pistons installed, uh, putting the rings on, and uh, lining up the, the connecting rods and all that kind of stuff. So initially what I want to do is put the um, compression rings in, two compression rings per piston. Uh, you kind of get them set in the cylinder wall and then you use the piston itself to push it down. I push it down about halfway down the cylinder. Um, no real guidance on this, just pretty easy. If you use the piston, it keeps it down, it keeps it flat. Then you take a feeler gauge, spec in the manuals 0 0.008 inches to 0 0.013 inches. And uh, essentially just going back and forth with the feeler gauge until you find your um, the space in between. There should be a gap in between and uh, set that up until you again you find you find the right gap and then uh, you check them all so there, again there's two compression rings and obviously four cylinders in this so I went through successively and checked all cylinders and all piston rings I did that before anything at all uh, the piston rings can you can use a flat file and you can adjust the rings if you have to, to to increase the gap thankfully I didn't have to do either way I didn't have to worry about increasing the gap or decreasing the gap um, so they, I don't know if I got lucky there or what, but it, but it fit pretty well. But again, you have to do both rings, and I did keep them in order uh, from piston to piston to make sure that I didn't lose track. So that the rings that I checked inside of cylinder wall number one, I kept with piston number one and so forth, so that I didn't lose lose control. Uh, I also noticed I'm not wearing gloves here. I had problems with the gloves getting stuck uh, in between the cylinder wall and the ring as I as I tried to to push that in. Uh, I edited out that portion of the video of me fumbling around with that, keeping getting my uh, ripping my gloves on on getting the uh, the latex stuck in the cylinder wall. It didn't work real well. But again, I didn't have any problems with the rings here. They fit just fine. And uh, again, I did all four uh, two rings per cylinder. You do have an oil control ring or an oil scraper ring. There's a couple different names for it. Uh, they don't get checked like this because they're not really sprung metal like these are. So. Pretty straightforward. Again, just go through and make sure your feeler gauge is fine, fine the size that you are, and as long as it's within that spec, you're good. So with that, then uh, real quick, I just kind of did a uh, reality check here and just slid all the pistons each each, each individual uh, cylinder wall because I had the machine work done. Uh, so now you're looking at putting the wheel scraper ring in. You start from the bottom and work your way up the piston so that you don't have interference from the uh, the rings on the top, the compression rings, and the backup ring. Uh, the, the oil rings are essentially three pieces here. Uh, you put the, the scraper in, in, the, in first and then you have two uh, small real thin rings that go in the top and the bottom here. Um, that's what I'm doing here, the bottom one, and then I put the top one in. Uh, they can be a little bit painful. Uh, again, you, I'm not wearing gloves here again because it's easy to tear and all that kind of stuff. And I, again, kind of edited out a, a lot of the stuff where I was... Um, having a hard time getting them fit in. One important thing to note here, and uh, I'll throw a picture up here in a couple seconds about uh, the oil ring, the, the center portion of it, um, depending on the, the company's rings that you have, it comes with instructions and everything you kind of see in the lower left hand corner of the screen there, but you want to make sure you follow those. Uh, this particular ring, the oil scraper rings, there was a red side and a, and a green side to the ring. I'm taking a picture right now. You'll see it. Uh, that red and the green side, you should not have any overlap there. That's where the ring splits. And then the, the upper and the lower spring rings that kind of hold that in, I offset those so that they lined up so the gaps on those were not in the same spot. Uh, and then I get to get ready to go on my compression rings. Now the rings are marked top and bottom here. Uh, conveniently enough, there's also a bevel in part on a portion of the ring. Uh, so you need to make sure, again, following the instructions that came with your particular rings, um, I don't remember off the top of my head who made who made these rings, but um, there's a little on these particular rings. There's a little it's in print that says top. You'll see that here when I take a picture of it right now. There's the top view, and you can kind of see the bevel in there. I'll give you a better picture of the bevel here in a second. I'm taking it right now, uh, but again, you want to follow the instructions and make sure you put these in right. Obviously, with top printed on there, it's pretty easy. Uh, the primary and secondary compression rings for these particular sets were identical, so that made it kind of easy. Uh, some manufacturers, I, I think, use different styles. Um, 
but with the top top marks there they were easy uh, and then I used a, a ring expander tool uh, I'll put a, a link in the description for that very inexpensive and you need to have it in my opinion because you take the chance of breaking the ring so even though the rings are, are kind of sprung and you can see here that it kind of opened up a little bit I'm trying to squeeze it back on the piston I actually was surprised how far it opened up uh, and didn't close itself back into the piston anyway even though the the rings are a kind of a sprung metal you will deform them when you use that ring expander um, if you tried to slide them on without using that ring expander in the twist of that as you tried to slide them down the piston you could snap it um, so I highly recommend you get the the uh, ring expander again I think I picked it up for Amazon for like seven or eight bucks um, pretty pretty inexpensive and cheap insurance when a set of rings will run you you know 40 or 50 I figured it was a, a good way to to not mess myself up um, but anyway you can kind of see there again that how much the rings kind of stick out but that's fine because I'm going to use a, a ring compression tool when I go to put the piston itself in uh, that compresses all those rings together so I'm checking it out just to make sure that everything kind of kind of works and trying to squeeze them in a little bit so I don't have any problems so now I got the connecting rod getting ready to mount that to the cylinder the uh, they are directional they're not a symmetrical connecting rod if you can kind of tell that the the shaft of the rod um, from the big end doesn't come all the way up straight unlike other designs so it's important obviously that this goes in properly um, not a mistake that you would find uh, late in the game you wouldn't be able to put the piston in it would never line up with the crankshaft so it's it's not something that would be um, terminal if you did it wrong and tried to start the motor or anything you like I said you could not get that the uh, the connecting rod in but I got my uh, Permatex assembly lube here I'll take uh, put a link in the uh, description of that use that pretty much throughout the engine build anywhere that there would be rotating parts that's definitely one on first um, both as an assembly ease and obviously to provide lubrication for the motor um, on initial start this stuff's pretty tacky and sticks pretty well using a soft blow hammer here to put the pin in the rest of the way I started to get a little nervous as I got towards the end I didn't want to uh, hammer on it too hard and maybe crack the ring or something uh, the split rings themselves they come with the with the uh, pistons so they're included I put the one in on one side that I was hammering away from or hammering towards I should say to provide a, a bottom for the for the wrist pin so that it would stop for me and I wouldn't continue to drive it all the way through the piston so I put that one in as a, as a preparation for for smacking the the uh, wrist pin through the rest of the way and just used a uh, wood clamp to uh, to press it home the rest of the way I didn't get it all the way in but uh, but most of the way used a socket and the dead blow again to drive the wrist pin home into the um, ring the uh, the ring pin on the other side and then closed it up with the other split ring you know, on that side and pretty much that uh, that sealed it. it slides back and forth a little bit to try to get that centered up in the piston there um, a little bit but it wasn't incredibly important because it'll center itself out so here I'm just kind of parading the four pistons together I have uh, rings to put in three of them still and I still have the old bearings on here I'll put the new bearings in right before I put it in the motor so now I'm going to go put the uh, put the piston in of note here you want your compression rings to have their gaps uh, at opposite sides so that you don't have any potential for blow through there's no uh, thumb rule that I could find for this I essentially just put them uh, about at least you know 40 or 50 degrees out but you want to drop the piston in there's that ring compressor that I was telling you about use the uh, the handle of the hammer just to lightly pound that in um, the problem that I was having here is the pistons are really small obviously compared to most uh, motors especially modern-day motors so the ring compression tool was a little big I couldn't find anything smaller than that you can see when I pull it off there I uh, didn't get anywhere near it my concern here is that I don't want to pound the thing in too far and start slamming the connecting rod into the crankshaft so that was my initial concern that maybe it wasn't that it wasn't uh, compressing enough but that I was smacking the, the bottom of the connecting rod into the crankshaft so I essentially rotate the motor here to take a look at that to make sure that that's not happening and it, and it wasn't I had uh, you'll notice that the crankshaft there is pointing down to give me the most distance from the bottom of the connecting rod and you can see it maybe just barely moving in there but uh, but that wasn't it so I pull that piston back out try to get that 
uh, ring compression tool on there again as tight as I can get uh, and, I, and I struggled with that if you can find a smaller ring compression tool more power to you but uh, I finally was able to get it and essentially just really tightening it down on it so uh, for whatever reason I didn't videotape the successful insertion of one of the pistons uh, and I'm get working on number four here you want to do them in opposite because of the way the crankshaft lines up again you want the crankshaft to be at the bottom stroke here to give you the most distance between the bottom of the connecting rod and the, the connecting rod bearing so same method drop the piston in make sure your connecting rods in the proper direction smack it in with the uh, with the handle of the hammer there and get it lined up so you don't drive the bottom of the skirt into the block and you'll feel it start to kind of lock in there and you don't have to be incredibly gentle with it um, but enough that you're not going to break anything and uh, drive that all the way in and once you get all the, the rings cleared that'll that'll just lift in there so now I'm turning the motor here to line up the bottom of the connecting rods to the to the crank pins themselves I essentially will grab the connecting rod and pull it towards the crankshaft it slides pretty well in here that's another reason for oiling it up um, so I'll pull that to get close to the to the crankshaft and push it from the from the bottom if I have to and essentially try to mate up those surfaces as good as I can so that I can put the crankshaft caps on there or excuse me the connecting rod caps on there uh, in preparation for bolting them up so I try to clean it a little bit uh, lint free cloth there in preparation for putting the bearings on and uh, clean the bearing surfaces themselves I got the new bearings in there using some compressed air blow anything out trying to get it all surfaces get everything blown out uh, and then more assembly lube I have it uh, on my finger there I cleaned my glove before I did that or at least the fingertip of the glove there to make sure that it didn't introduce any contamination or any particulate or anything like that that would mess up my bearings in the future and then what I'll do here is essentially pull the crankshaft uh, up a little bit or turn the crankshaft into the connecting rod a little bit and pull the connecting rod up a little bit and, and seat it home and you can see that it comes up pretty well then it's a simple matter of putting the caps on and torquing them down um, you'll see here when I put it on there's these little uh, that little metal tab uh, that's a relatively old design the newer design the bolts are redesigned and they didn't require those metal tabs um, another thing I'll tell you is that my connecting rod uh, had stamps in them both the numerical and little dots that gave me the direction of which way the connecting rod cap the bearing cap would go on so however your motor is you want to identify that uh, uniqueness to it and make sure that you put them on the proper way so that you match up either the number four to the number four or the four dots to the four dots or, or however, whatever you might find uh, but I did find that on on this motor so now I'm essentially double checking I've uh, if you caught the little peak there I've lubricated it uh, already with the assembly lube and uh, putting the getting the, the threads going I'm, I'm double checking my my marks here just to make sure I must have doubted that I put it in properly after looking at number four I'm not quite sure why uh, but putting the bolts in and again you may or may not have those metal tabs and then taking my uh, wrench there and, and, and slugging them down not real tight yet I'll put the, uh, the torque wrench on them here in a little bit uh, but going down and, and snuggling them all in and trying to get everything again back and forth not too tight just to draw that crank um, shaft and the connecting rod together evenly so I don't end up with anything uh, skewed in there to uh, preclude any you know imbalance or messing it up as I try to rotate it the first time so I'll snug it up with my breaker bar here uh, I believe it was 9 16 socket and uh, then I take the torque wrench to it start torquing them down and right about in here I start to have a problem uh, 42 to 46 foot pounds on these and I had problems getting that 42 to 46 so I'm bringing these up and the torque wrench isn't clicking I go to the number one piston and uh, that one does a little bit better clicks on me or clicks for me I should say and uh, took me a while to figure it out why this wasn't tightening up I thought that maybe I'd started to strip out the connecting rod you can see that uh, I step away there and 
kind of figure out that I probably have either messed something up or something is messed up. I try it a little bit more and uh, it just won't just won't tighten up. And what's happening here is the bolt is actually stretching uh, and starting to neck out because the bolts have uh, weakened up over the 50 years of the life. These were OEM bolts. Looking at the markings on them, they did match all the markings that I was uh, used to find in here. I'm, I'm just trying to find at what torque I can get it to um, see in and trying to read that off and figure out that something's not right here. So uh, you may have this problem. Hopefully you don't. But uh, I had to try to figure out what was wrong and I, and I didn't know. So I'm, I'm at this particular point in the build, I'm pretty nervous that I've broken something uh, or I've started to strip out the connecting rod bolts. Um, but I do a, a proof of concept here and just rotate the motor just to make sure I don't have any binding or anything else that may be impacting the ability of the motor to rotate. And uh, sure enough, it feels pretty good. Rotates pretty good. No, uh, no binding or anything that would seem to be crooked. So in the absence of that, I go and take the bolts back off and uh, try to figure out what's going on here. So I try to figure it out and look at the neck of the bolt to see if I can see that it's stretching. Pretty much identify at that point that it doesn't look right. I'm going to pull the second one out here and look at that one also. Try to compare. And uh, I'm going to have a steel image here in a second to show you um, what I found with the bolts compared to one that was good. So on the left is a good one. The one in the middle started to stretch and you can see the one on the right is stretched quite a bit so you can look and see how much length it grew. So it took me about a week to get new bolts that I was able to source. Um, the NOS bolts are new old stock and was able to get original Triumph bolts and uh, got them tightened up though I was a little nervous tightening them down but uh, everything worked out fine and I got the rest of the four pistons in. So that's about it for this video. Uh, I believe the next one I, I start to put the bottom of the motor together uh, but that's it for tonight. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Cheers.